Hello and welcome to Friday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be taking a look at a puzzle by a debut constructor on the channel. Um, the author is Rubens Cube, um, and Rubens Cube apparently in real life is a Dutch mathematician uh, who also makes levels for the computer game Super Mario Maker 2. And apparently there's a whole Discord server devoted to that that might, I think it might even be run by Rubens Cube. Um, so we ought to be in good hands today so far as puzzling is concerned. Um, before I read you the rules for this one, which is, I'm noticing an incredibly sparse grid, by the way. Um, I need to mention a couple of things. If you own our Killer Sudoku app, make sure you update it because it has all its puzzles in it now. All 100 puzzles, we've done a big update, loads of new puzzles. I think we put 15 um, bonus puzzles in there as well, slightly easier puzzles. Uh, so there are actually 115 puzzles, um, but also many of the puzzles that we've released in the latest uh, update are some by some of the greatest constructors in the world of Sudoku, people like Fistam Fell and Bastian Vilegem. Um, just incredible, incredible stuff. So there are killer Sudokus aplenty to get your teeth into. Um, other than that, if you're a patron of the channel over on Patreon, you hopefully will be able to have a look by now, assuming I've uploaded it at my solve of Fistam Fell's ridiculously difficult puzzle called uh, Slitherlink Take Me Home. That absolutely fried my brain. I will not deny it, but I did, I think, well, I did I did solve it, um, not quickly, uh, but there is a very long video in which uh, which you, you see me really beating my head against a brick wall <laughs> from Patreon right now. Um, other than that, no other news. Let's get on with Quantherm Entangled uh, by Rubens Cube, and here are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. Cells separated by a knight's move in chess cannot contain the same digit. So let's just pause there and make sure we understand what that means. In fact, let's use the middle of the grid. If this is a one, uh, then none of these cells in this puzzle could be a one. And that's because if this one in the center was a chess knight, it could jump to all of the highlighted cells. And therefore, because we can't have the same digit and knights move apart, none of those cells could be a one. Of course, we don't know whether that's a one or not. It would be serendipitous indeed if it turns out to be. Um, now, digits along a thermometer must increase from the bulb end. So if this is a three, this cell has to be higher than three. So like mercury rises as, you, as the temperature gets hotter, so digits rise as we ride up the thermometer. And the green line is a palindrome, i.e. it must read the same forwards and backwards. So that means if this was sort of one, two, three, four from this direction, then this would have to be one, two, three, four from this direction as well. And then, oh, I see. And then we'd have to have double five in the four. We wouldn't have to have double five, but one could have double five. And then you can see if we read it from this position, it reads one, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. And if we read it from this direction, it reads exactly the same way. One, two, three, four, five, five, four, three, two, one. So that would be a legitimate way of filling the green line. Do have a go at the puzzle. The way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I have no clue how difficult this is, by the way, and that we don't have a lot to go on because this is Rubens Cube's first puzzle on the channel. Um, Right, hang on a moment. So now if I was Mark, I would pencil mark this thermometer. This is actually incredibly sparse, isn't it? There really isn't much here. Um, I refuse to pencil mark this thermometer. I mean, I can see that this cell has to have four digits higher than it. So it must be, it can't be a six because seven, eight, nine, this would be a 10. But that means that basically every cell on this thermometer has five different options. And that's something I'm not prepared to pencil mark. So it must be the palindrome, I think. Uh, yeah, OK. Knight's move is going to be powerful here, isn't it? Let's have a look at those two cells because these two digits are the same because of the palindrome. But, but, but by knight's move, they're doing damage, actually. They're doing a lot of damage in box eight and box four. Possibly, yeah, in fact, enough damage to be very useful. Where does orange go in box four? Well, because of the knight's move constraint, it can't go in those cells. Same is true of that one. Sudoku rules out those, so that becomes orange. 
So orange has got to be in a couple of cells at the top of the grid. Um, and I think by symmetry we should be able to do exactly the same trick in box eight because it, these are just it's just symmetrical logic. We're going to have we're going to have a an orange pushed into this position, one of those two positions. Ah, ha, huh, right. Ah, that's interesting as well. So look at where orange is in box um, box two. It's got to be in one of those two cells. And by analogy and by symmetry, it's going to be in those two cells in box six. So now we should be asking where, where orange goes in column seven. And at the same time, we could ask where it goes in row three. And we will find that it's got to be in one of these three cells from row three's perspective, because it can't be in any of those six. And, it, and it's got to be in one of these three cells in column seven because it can't be in any of those six. And the only cell that simultaneously meets those criteria is this cell, which is now... Ah, right. Okay, so now I am prepared to, to pencil mark. Because look, this is so beautiful, actually. Orange is on the thermometer here in the third position, but it's on the thermometer here in the bulb position. So this can't be a one anymore, because if it's a one, that would be a one and that would be a minus one or or lower. And that's clearly silly. So this has to be from well, from this one's perspective, we're looking at at least a three. But from this one's perspective, we're looking at a maximum of five. So this is three, four or five. All of the orange cells are three, four or five, which means this is much more restricted than it used to be. Five sixes. Yeah, this this one. Uh, can we go any further than that? Probably can, can't we? We can. I think we can extend things up this thermometer as well. Um, seeing whether we can do better than that. Although, yeah, I see what's going to happen here. I'm not sure what the result of it's going to be. But what we what we did here is we worked very hard on those two cells, which were right in the centres of their boxes, and that the boxes themselves were diagonally opposite one another. Well, surely those two cells work absolutely identically vis-a-vis -vis these two boxes. So we should be able to write blue into this by symmetry. And we can. Blue goes in the top left corner of the grid. And that means we can place blue by symmetry again, looking at the S in this box. Blue is on the bulb of this thermo. So are we going to get blue? Are we going to get blue? No, it's not on that thermo. Can we get blue on this thermo? Ah, no, we're not going to. Look, it's going to miss it. It can't go here because these two would be a knight's move apart. So blue goes up there. And blue goes there as well. Because it can't go here because, well, for two reasons, I suppose. Blue and orange can't be the same from column two's perspective. But also blue and orange are a knight's move apart there. So blue's got to be down here. In box eight, blue's got to be down here in box seven, which means we can place. Oh, ah, so it does it, it ends up in on the thermo bit here. Oh, this is so clever. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, so exactly the same logic. Blue has to go in this position now from because in column seven, it's got to be in the bottom three cells, and from row seven, it's got to be in the final three cells. The only cell that meets those strike two criteria is this one. Well, how now could this be a nine? If it's a nine, this is a nine. That's a 10 and that's an 11 and we've broken the puzzle. So that is seven. That means six, five, four, three, three, two, one, three, 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 seven, eight, nine, seven, seven, seven. Um, okay, that might be, that might be everything, but that is, that's just glorious. And, that is, and what I love about that is it's not terribly difficult um, to find, but it's very, very fun when you find it. When you find that these thermometers are it's sort of integrating together in this way, it's really cool. Uh, oh, no, that's not a thermo. Don't look, don't look at the palindrome like it's a thermo because it's not.
Um, right, right, right. What we probably have to do is to keep going up our up our um, palindrome now, though. So let's look at these two cells. So yes, although. Hang on, we have to be a bit more careful here, I've suddenly realised. I was about to get very excited about perp the purplification of box 4. And we can see quickly that purple must be in one of those two cells. But we don't know which one. At least I don't think I know which one. Um, so... So maybe we've actually just got to... Well, yeah, we could pencil mark purple a little bit because this square obviously sees... Well, it actually sees three, four, seven, eight, nine. So it sees four, five of the digits. So it can be one, two... Oh, it can't be five. No, it sees... So it sees six of the digits. So actually, this digit here has to just be one, two, or six, I want to say. And that's quite good because this see this is the same as purple one two or six and it sees two so now this is down to one or six yeah okay Th this can't be six because if it's six where's six going to go in this box and the answer is here by sudoku and that's going to be a knight's move apart from its friend so this is one this is one that's not purple and that loses its grey flash as a result. And now, now we've got one overlapping with orange. So we've got, now we've got a purple, yeah, we've got a one three pair in box one. And we can sort of fix that logic up there now. And we can probably, well, four must be in one of those cells. We've still got a couple of cells on the palindrome to look at as well. So we mustn't forget that. But let's just see if we can We've got sixes in one of those two cells. We need... Can't do anything with twos, I don't think. And the other digit is five, which is mm, very mildly restricted. Uh, okay, right. I'm not sure what to do now, so I'm going to go to the next cell on the palindrome. Let's make this yellow and see what we can do with this one. So yellow in box... Five is in one of those two cells, which is not great because um, we don't know what either of these cells is. Yellow, aha! Uh -huh. Wow, is that true? Where does yellow go in this box? Yellow by Sudoku is in none of those squares. Now, yellow is already in the same box as a one, three, and a seven, so it's not those digits. So that is yellow which means yellow is in one of these two cells. It means, no, well, I will pencil mark that. Yellow is up here somewhere. And so just from a Sudoku perspective then, let's look at this digit because yellow, oh yeah, this is good. This is good because that sees a four by night's move. So this digit cannot be one, two, three, four, because that sees yellow here. Uh, or it can be five, maybe. Can't be six, seven, eight, can't be nine. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So, so yellow is just five straight away. We can just write it in. Uh, now, what does that do? So five is now in one of those two squares. Five is now in one of these two squares. Five is up here somewhere. I don't think we can improve on that. That's yellow because it's a five. Ah, so that's not yellow. So yellow's up here. Um, there's a little trick. I'm not sure whether this is worth doing, but I'll mention it. Here, we know that the five is in one of those two cells. So you can't actually put a five in either of these two positions, because if you did, because of the knight's move constraint, it would wipe out both possibilities for five in box seven. So five has to be in one of three places, I think, and it can't be here. So five is now in one of two places, which means five in box number nine is now in one of three places. Still not quite good enough, but we're slowly whittling it down. 
And what we still haven't done is resorted to the final cell on the palindrome. Four by Sudoku has to be in this domino. And okay, let's do it. Let's look at the last cell of the palindrome, see what we can do with that. So this square, just by Sudoku, can only be six, eight, or nine, which I don't think that is actually seeing any of these cells, bobbins. The, right, okay, but that's clearly seeing nine, isn't it? Seeing nine there, so we can remove nine. So this is six or eight now. So, yes, yeah, okay. Those are the same, yeah. So where does red go in this box? It can't go here by night's move, so red goes right to the top of the grid, and that is red. That should be very beautiful for reasons I can't quite see. Um, oh, sorry, I can't quite see how to do that. It's got a bit of a kick in the tail, this, hasn't it? It's It, it was very, very cool. And now I've totally ground to a halt. Um, two, four, six, nine there. I'm now scanning the grid desperately trying to spot anything that looks remotely helpful. I mean, there's a lot of packing around this area. So we, if we get really stuck, I'm going to start pencil marking all these digits in. Um, but let me just take a stare at this for a moment or two longer. Two is quite restricted in this box because this two here rules itself out of those two. So two's only got two positions in box one. Um, okay, that's still not, there's nothing like good enough, is it? Uh, one, two, three, four, six, four, six, eight, nine. Right, here is something. This square here sees nine, it sees four. So that's a six or an eight, which means it's the same as this. Well, it's not the same, but it's formed a pair. That's a six, eight pair. So if that's right, this can't be six, which would be massive. I'm just gonna double check this actually. Uh, one, two, three, sees four, sees five, can be six, can't be seven or nine. Yeah, six or eight here. So that means this square is no longer able to be six, which means this is a six, which means this is a four, which means this is a four. Now this square must be a nine by Sudoku. These two squares are now known. These are five and two, I want to say. And we can't quite resolve that, I don't think, but now we must have a, oh, so now we've got two overlapping with orange. We've got a two, three pair at the end of this row. We've got a one something pair, a one eight pair in this row, and we've got a nine and something there. Nine and, uh, what is it, seven. Now, something's probably reaching in one of these cells by night's move. Uh, no, not quite, only by sort of tigger jumps, not, not by just normal night level jumps. So we haven't quite got that resolved. Um, 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 six or eight here. This square can't be a six or an eight anymore because you can, you can color these sixes and eights if you like. Uh, let's color that one gray. And you can see that this square here sees both versions of six, eight. So whichever way around these sixes and eights go, this square can be neither. So what can this be? It can't actually be one, two, three. It can't be four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a nine, good grief. Sorry, I just got a phone call then. Actually, it went on for a while. So I've now totally lost my train of thought. Uh, what have we just done? I've just got this nine. Oh yeah, that was a hard one nine as well, wasn't it? That was because it saw all the other digits. So now we can ask, uh, well, nine must be down there in box number seven. Nine is a tiny bit restricted in box number two. Uh, 
Hmm, yeah, you see, things like this are hard to see in Knight's Move Sudoku. Where does 9 go in that box? And the answer is strange. <laughs> so it can't go, obviously by Sudoku it's ruled out of these squares. It can't go in this domino because of this 7-9 pair. If you put a 9 in either of those cells, both of those become impossible. So that's not going to work. Now, a 9 here actually would also break the puzzle because that removes all of those 9s from box 2. So 9 is now in one of three places in box number 3 which is nearly interesting. Uh, no, I'm going to go further. I'm going to claim that can't be a nine now, because if that's a nine, you can't put any of those three, all of those three positions break. So that's not nine. So nine is now vertical in column six, which means that nine is down here in box eight which means nine is aligning with where it goes in box seven. So now nine in row seven has to be not in those six. So it's, it's in the orange squares, which are the threes. Ah, oh no, well, well that's doing something. Look, because, because the nine, this, this is now a three nine pair, so it's not five. So the five is now in one of those two cells. Oh, this is doing a few things actually. So five is not here anymore. So that's got to be the five in box seven. That loses its yellowification. That gains or lacks a gray flash now. Uh, okay, that doesn't do as much as I was hoping for. But I did notice that the nines now are aligning in boxes nine and six. So that can't be a nine anymore. So we've got nines in this little two by two. And oh, oh, good, right. I've got a six eight pair in column two, so I'm missing two digits for these squares. They must be a two four pair, and these are not seen by anything. <laughs> um, oh, this stingeth in the tail mightily, doesn't it? This is not easy. Um, where is it? Is it gray? Gray's in one of these two squares in box one, which is not doing anything. One, two, eight, nine in these squares. So one, two, eight at the bottom of column seven, because the nine is, we know the nine's up there. So one, two, and eight down here, but these, mm, this is just isn't seeing enough. It's not seeing enough to be interesting. What about this cell? This cell might be interesting because it sees nine and six. Um, so from this row's perspective, we need to put twos, fours, sixes, and eights. So it's two, four, or eight. No, no, it's not eight. Okay, so it's two, four, two or four only. Let me just double check that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, gosh, two or four only. Same as this. So there's something going on with twos and fours, maybe two, four, six, nine in this column. So that's two, four or six. Yep, I'm not proud. I'm going to pencil mark it. Um, Wow, okay, goodness me. This column, maybe? We, we need twos, two, six, seven, eight. Oh, that doesn't quite see both colors of six and eight. So that's just two, six, or eight. Oh, seven is down here, which is what the blue flash is telling us. Bobbins. Um, Oh, eight. Ah, not quite one. One, one in row three. Right, I was looking at this one eight pair, which I saw couldn't go in these two squares. And if you scan along this row, 
We've got a 1-3 pair in box 1, which is easy to miss, but that means I think this cell has to be the 1 in row 3, which is brutal. Yeah, oh, that, that actually does stuff. That does stuff. Good grief. Right, where does 1 go? Down here now. And I think, because it can't go in either of those two squares because of this purple one, it goes in there and interferes with our colouring of the seven pencil marks. So that becomes seven now. That becomes seven. This loses its colour. This loses its colour. These both lose their grey flashes. When I place this, I took the position of a five. So that's a five. That's a five. That's a two. So this becomes a real yellow. And this is no longer able to be yellow. That, that gains a yellowness. That lose, uh, loses a yellowness or we'd be a knight's move apart. So that becomes yellow. So this becomes yellow. Aha. And all of a sudden, I'm wondering how many yellows we have. The answer is all of them. So yellows are done. Yellows are done out of nowhere. And presumably... Presumably what? That's the next question. Have we actually done anything really good there or not? The answer might be not. This one is ruling itself out of this cell. Um, ah, this column, we've got to put in four, eight and nine. So, ah, so that's not nine. Oh, aha. Right. That's the square we need to look at. This is 4, 8 or 9 by straightforward Sudoku. It's not 9. It sees 4 by jiggery pokery. So that's got to be 8, which means that's 2. So that's... What's that doing? Well, it's putting some stuff in at the top, isn't it? We now need to have 4 and 9 at the top. And there's a 4 looking into it. So that's the 4. That's the 9. That's the 9. And this column is done. This square has to be a 1 or an 8 by Sudoku to complete this column. And this 4 might be doing some magic for us. Let's see. And that's not 4 anymore. No, <laughs> I'm not sure it is actually. It might be, but I can't immediately see. Is this 1, 8 seeing something useful? No. Okay, well, let's try down here then. Twos, fours, and sixes. So that's got to be two or six. And I think, I think it can be either. That one has got to be four or six. I'm, I'm desperately scanning around to see if we've got any um, Knight's Move stuff that we can do, but I'm not seeing it. Right. Goodness me, okay, so, no, seven, Is it these sevens that we earned, have we, no, we've still got this, like, X-wing of, X-wing of sevens going on that's unresolved. Oh, there's a two in the bottom row looking at that square, so we'll definitely use that, aha, four, six, two here. Oh, that could be huge. That could be huge. This six is giving us twos and fours. So how is this resolving things? Four, four. There's a four in one of those two cells in box nine. These two squares now have to be six and nine only, which means we get a two at the top of the grid. So this is no longer two. So we've got two, two. We must have a two on top of a seven. So that's a 2-7 pair, which is not resolved, but I don't mind too much about that. These squares are three sixes and eights now, and probably we can... <laughs> I can't do anything. Uh, no, sorry, I don't think we can do anything. Right, where does 2 go in this column? It can only go there. So we'll take that. How many 2s have we got? Loads. Yeah, this two is reaching in here. Lovely. So that's seven, that's two, that's seven, that's nine. That's nine, that's three, that's three, that's two. Great. So all the twos now I think we've got in the grid. Probably most of the nines, but not 
all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, we've got an eight, nine pair in the corner. Oh, you rotten thing. What's that square then? That's a four. Ah, so that is grey. That's interesting. It has to be the six, six or eight that's not red in this box. Still, so, oh no, still not resolved, sorry. Okay. <laughs> Um, but I do, I do actually think we're getting somewhere now. I'm less concerned. I'm not going to finish. I'm more thinking about how we're going to finish with some sort of a plum. Um, let's think about that. We can put in. Hmm. Don't know. <laughs> this square has got to be six or eight. Which, if I could colour it, would be marvellous. Is that the point? Is there some way we can colour this digit? Grey. Ah, okay, yeah. That is grey, isn't it? Because because we know that this is a 368 triple, and this cell sees that one and that one through the medium of madness that is Sudoku. So that is, or Knight's Move Sudoku, so that is grey which means that is three at the top of the grid and my phone is ringing again. Uh, I'll just let me, oh, I know what this is. I've got a call now. Ah, uh, just, I've just got to really speed up now. Hang on, hang on. I will, I will, I will finish. I will finish. I'm not going to be delayed again. Gray goes here and, ah, uh, can I do it now? Oh no. I know I've got a Zoom call now. That that's what that that's what that buzzing noise was. But we're very nearly finished. We just have to put four in the grid here, and now we can put four in the grid here. So this is one six or eight. So all we need to do now is to figure out the colouring, I think, and we'll be good to go. So this this is one six or eight as well so we've got one sixes and eights all over the place but but we need to know i need to know what the color of this is i'd see look the, the, the purple one is seeing it yes 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 so that's red which means that's gray which, oh, this is so cool. So gray is in one of those cells and that's gray and therefore gray is six. And we can quickly fill those in, quickly fill these in, which means we get the eight and the one, which we get the one here, we get the eight here, we get the one here, we get the, the eights doing the eight and the nine over there, which does the nine and the six. And I know that you'll want me to pencil mark all these in and I will try and do the greys as well. Where's the sixes? Grey them all in. Do the ones as well. We should do that, shouldn't we? Uh, get rid of the colouring there, which is unnecessary. Get rid of the greying there, so we don't get any OCD problems. Ungrey those. Uncolour these. I've no doubt I've missed something. But I'm prepared now, I think, to click the... Uh, let's, that one should be purple and that should be, uh, no, that should be orange. And now we click tick. Yay! <laughs> I've got to go. I've got to go. Quantum Untangled, marvellous puzzle, Rubens Cube. Thank you very much. Uh, really enjoyed it, especially the start. I thought the stuff with the thermos was gorgeous. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Mm -hmm.